Are you tired of your Spike Prime robot for FLL looking something like this? Small, boring, and generally uncompetitive? Well boy are you watching the right video. This is a walkthrough full of an actual human talking, as well as what you are probably actually here for, 7 useful tips about making a Spike Prime robot. My first piece of advice for any team is to have a dog gear attachment. Now what a dog gear attachment is, it lets you easily snap attachments on and take them off in the middle of the heat of a robot run. Really useful. I've developed a very simple design using the Spike Prime motor. It takes two black pins, and then you have to have one of these knob gears, I guess. Is that what they're actually called? I don't know. You can easily just... Well, I'm terrible at this job. Just pop it in there, and then you can just have it run. Really simple. My second tip, big wheels, big brain. There's a simple reason. Small wheel, like let's say one half the size of this, it takes a lot longer for it to get places. With this one, you can go faster, but still have the motors moving slowly, if you get what I mean. One problem is stability. Large wheels wiggle a lot more than small wheels. They're also pretty thin. That's a good thing, because that means your robot is overall thinner. The stability problem, addressed right now. Stability of tall wheels is a big problem. Simple solution, something called wheel cages. Essentially what a wheel cage does, goes on the axle along with the wheel, and that way the wheel is a lot less wiggly. You can also add extra support in the back. That's about it. They're super simple. Use these often. Tip number four, use caster balls. Now, if you've got a basic spike prime, you're probably already using caster balls. But I don't really like the spike prime caster balls because they're plastic. Then again, I love the Spike Prime caster balls, because they're plastic. Here's why. The EV3 caster balls were metal. Super nice. They were much smoother. But, this, al this also happens. That's rust. It's not good. It does not slide nearly as nicely. Now, why use a caster ball instead of something like a normal wheel? FLL mats are made out of plywood. Plywood has grooves. A wheel can get stuck in a groove and that can kind of mess up your robot. It might not be much, but caster balls are nice. This fifth one may sound like a bit of a no-brainer, but my team actually had this mistake one year. I take complete blame because I was the one who did a lot of the robot building. We did have it fixed, but it was still kind of a silly problem. Have the port exposed and easily accessible. Like, this robot's great, because you can just pop it in there. And then it's like flat against this, it's not like hanging down and messing up this or anything. You can't hit it from the top and it'll break the bottom. You can't hit it from the bottom because it's resting flat here. It's a really simple one. Do not forget to do it, though. Number six is actually really hard. Good wiring. This robot has great wiring. For this one, we've got the wire tucked in here. This one, we've got the wire tucked in here. As I say, based off of other robotics YouTuber, Dude 35 no spaghetti monsters. Do not have robots that look like this. That's just bad. There are so many ways it could go wrong. It could get tangled in the wheel and you could have all sorts of rubbing issues. It could ruin one of your motors. It's especially a problem with the Spike Prime. Where all of the wires are the same length, you cannot take them out. If one of the wires gets ruined, well, you gotta buy a whole new motor. With the EV3 or NXT, you could just buy another wire. No problem. Spike Prime, it's not that simple. Good wiring is critical.
However, not nearly as critical as tip number seven. Subscribe, please.